called Visio for Azure, well, maybe just by me, but the ARM template viewer is a great tool to make it really easy to author ARM templates. Here, we can hear from its creator, Ben Coleman. Welcome to the show, Ben. Hi, Dean. Um, yeah, really good to be here. It's uh, been an amazing show. I've been watching all of the, the content so far. It's been, uh, it's been blowing me away. Excellent. And we're really grateful to have you as well, Ben. Could you just maybe let the audience know what, what you do at Microsoft? Yeah, sure. So I'm a cloud solution architect. Um, I work in the UK partner team. So um, there's a range of different solution architects at Microsoft. I work specifically with, with partners and trying to get those partners to adopt Azure fundamentally. So um, these could be services partners. It could be a partner developing some software on top of our platform. Uh, and I help them make, you know, choices to be able to migrate their applications, build new applications, perhaps replatform them into Azure, understand the design choices, um, you know, changes they might need to make, architectural decisions, and the Azure services are going to support that. So really, we're just there to get partners using Azure and getting their apps up there. Got it. That's great. And um, this talk isn't really about your day job, and we'll get onto the story about that in a in a little while. Yeah. But um, this is basically about infrastructure as code. So for those watching this who are wondering what is infrastructure as code, should I care about it? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, exactly that. What is it and should they care? Right. So, I mean, fundamentally, infrastructure as code is, is certainly nothing new. It's been around as a concept for, for quite some time. Um, and it's really about taking an approach where you describe your, your resources that you need to run your applications, your environments in some sort of machine readable form. Um, slightly different approach from, say, writing scripts, you know, an imperative approach is much more declarative. So you describe a set of rules or outcomes that you want to happen uh, in some sort of textual form, machine readable form, and, and hand that over to some system to automate and deploy. So fundamentally, it's about taking uh, manual steps out of the process, people, you know, going into a portal, uh, clicking into some sort of GUI tool uh, and having some repeatable, described, well understood, um, you know, form that they can uh, take many, many times to be able to build their applications. And that gives people a bunch of benefits, right? They get repeatability, they get autonomy, they get yep. um, some kind of safety. They're deploying their systems a little bit safer. Uh, you, it, what yep. you mentioned there about um, not just clicking around in the portal, it reminded me of. Uh, Damien Brady, one of my colleagues, who famously says, "Don't let friends don't let friends right click publish." Right, and this is all part of that kind of uh, DevOps cycle, I guess. Absolutely, it's about it's about having a bit of control, you know, and, and a bit of um, governance about what people do. You know, being able to go into the production resource group and click around and make changes. You know, obviously that's that's going to be a bad thing, but uh, you know, in the worst case, you know, if some did delete a load of resources. If you've got some template that could recreate them very quickly, you know, you, you're in a much much better place, and you know, people will understand that. This template describes my resources and my environment exactly, um, and I'm not going to do things manually. You know, that's a that's a key part of, of of good cloud and good DevOps best practice. And this particular tool that we're going to be talking about, we mentioned the ARM template viewer. We're talking about Microsoft's flavor of infrastructure as code. Uh, there are yeah. others available, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, fundamentally, we're talking about Azure Resource Manager, which is ARM. ARM has a templating language, which is described in basically JSON files, JSON documents. Um, another very popular one would be like Terraform. Uh, it has a slightly different language, but they're all taking the same approach, which is to this infrastructure as code approach. The, the, the languages differ, um, the, the formatting is different, but the outcomes are generally the same. But yeah, we, we're very much focused on the, the Azure templates, which are these JSON documents. Right, and I mean, I've wrote JSON for, for years now in documents. And right. even for me, sometimes this stuff is a little bit verbose, right? Or a bit complicated sure. to read, right? So um, that kind of segues nicely into this this tool, right? Your, your tool is to make this a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I think one of the big criticisms, and I think we can be you know, open and honest about this, of, of, of the ARM templates is they can be quite verbose, quite difficult to read, a little bit um, hard to understand the flow, and they, you know, they can get very, very large. And so, yeah, I really wanted to see if I could take something uh, and to make it easier to people understand, to, to visualize it, to display it. I mean, I'm the sort of guy, a sort of web developer. I like making visual vi visual things. So, I, you know, I set, set myself a sort of task to see if we could make a, a prettier version of, of what we do inside an ARM template. Nice. And uh, before we kind of dive into the tour, and I can't wait to see it uh, and share it with the audience, but this is an interesting story because this isn't your day job at Microsoft, right? You said you work with partners to help them uh, leverage Azure. Yeah. How do um, how did this come about, really? 
Yeah, that's right. I'm I'm not part of the Azure engineering team. I'm not part of the Azure team or the portal. I'm not part of that organization at, at all. But um, I mean, part of my job is talking to developers. I'm a developer myself. Um, you know, I love writing code. Um, so this was very much a side project. Um, you know, I was set, set out one day with a germ of an idea to see if I could take this JSON document and render it in a visual way. I found some JavaScript libraries to do that. And, you know, it just slowly went from there. And, you know, you know, it's a longer story, I'll cut it short, but we ended up with the Visual Studio extension, um, which, you know, lets you take the ARM template you may be editing in Visual Studio and, and visualize it in uh, in my visualization stuff. So, yeah, it was very much a side project on evenings and weekends, much to my uh, wife's despair. <laughs> That's. I think it's just a fantastic story because obviously you do work at Microsoft, but this was a completely open source project that you created, right? And uh, yeah. I think the message is to anyone watching, developers that are watching this, that you, you'll see the tool in a minute and you'll see why I think this is such a cool story. But um, if you're building cool open source projects, the, the team are, are open to looking at these projects and maybe potentially integrating them into places like the portal, which we're going to see in a moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this um, has now ended up in the Azure portal, as you said. How that came about wasn't because I'm a Microsoft employee or I pushed it. It was you know, purely organic. I, I tweeted about this project. I got a huge response. I was like uh, blown away by the kind of social uh, media response to it. And through that, the uh, engineering teams kind of got wind of it and reached out to me and said, look, you know, hey, this is a kind of cool thing. Can we get it into the Azure portal? Some of those guys really helped get it into the portal. Funnily enough, they were funny about giving me right access to the um, production code. So a guy, uh, Piotr Makowski, did a lot of that work, taking my ARM template code from Visual Studio and getting it into the portal. But, you know, the end result's been been really, really cool. And I think you're right. Yeah, people, are, we're looking for people to collaborate and contribute. And if you've got a cool project, there's, there's every possibility it could end up inside inside Azure. I love that. That's great. It's funny how they, they didn't let you right click publish the um, production. Funny portion, that. No? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> they were funny about it. Brilliant. So, well, I'm no, I'm definitely want to see it. I'm sure the people watching uh, want to see it. So let's let's hop into the demo and see this see this tool and how it can help us alter our ARM templates. Yeah, absolutely. So let me um, just share my screen here. So I'm in Visual Studio Code here. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with it. I don't need to talk much about that. I've got a couple of these ARM templates open. Um, so you can see it's a JSON document. Uh, and as you can also see, it's pretty it's pretty long, pretty verbose. Now, you know, if you're new to this, um, you might not have seen this before. This will surprise you. This deploys a single virtual machine. So it's 300 lines long. So, and even if you're familiar with the ARM templates and if you've spent some time with them, what's not immediately apparent from this is the relationships and the dependencies between the resources. So that's a kind of key part that I wanted to wanted to to, to get to. Um, so what I what I've done with the extension is um, once you've got it installed in VS uh, from the marketplace, um, add this little icon up here, and when you click that, that basically renders the 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 ARM template uh, as a visualization. Um, now this that. isn't static. This is actually something you can interact with. You can drag these around. You can move these. Uh, you actually click on each icon and uh, get some more information. And so fundamentally, each icon in here represents an Azure resource that's over in the over over here in the JSON uh, side. But it's, it's not static. I can make changes to this, and, and the, the view will update correspondingly. So, for example, I could you know be start typing in here and, and not be aware that I may, perhaps I've made a mistake. I've left something in here. The 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 visualizer will try and pass the template and give you a, a clear hint that something something is wrong. So as I ah, edit my resource, and make changes to it. That's, that's really cool. So I was just yeah. saying that's really cool that the um, so sometimes in VS Code when we're doing this stuff, there's like a little squiggly line that tells us we've got a syntax error in our JSON, right? But in a 300 line yeah. JSON file, it may not always be obvious that that's there. It does a pretty exactly. good job at showing to, us. Hard to spot it in the in the in the noise. That's right. So it just makes it a little bit easier. And and then these templates, you know, they could be anything. So I'm I'm looking at a virtual machine here, but it could be something like a web application. So if I just click into a different uh, JSON view, I get a different application rendered over here. Um, so, you know, these these templates um, aren't just for infrastructure. Infrastructure's codes may be misleading. It could be any Azure resource. So here I've got a web application, my SQL database. All of that can be in, inside the template. And, it, you know, as I say, as I make changes to this, um, you know, the names and labels will update dynamically. So I might change this to say App Insights. And the view updates nicely for me. So this you know, it's really nice to be able to have some visual feedback on what you're doing and what you're, what you're, what you're typing, yeah. 
Nice. And there's a there's a, there's a bunch of buttons at the top there. So uh, it seems like it's, you've added a few little features here. So what what do they help us do? Can we can we get any more out of this? Yeah. So I mean, what I'm going to do quickly actually is jump over to the Azure Portal version, and I can talk about the buttons there because they're exactly the same. So perfect. Let me just bring up um, the Azure Portal. So this has been brought into the, the Azure portal. Uh, one thing I would stress is you need to go to the release candidate portal, which is like a preview, a pre-production version of the portal. This is available to everyone. It's not a private to Microsoft um, super secret URL or anything. So if you just go to rc, release candidate.portal.azure.com, you'll be able to see this feature. So fundamentally, the feature's um, part of the export uh, template. So I can go into a resource group and there's the export template button. It's been there for a long time. I think it's been always part of the portal. Um, it's definitely nothing new. But what is new is the visualize template option. So it will take the JSON from the export um, template and let, let you visualize it. So I'm in this resource group with a, with a Docker mach virtual machine in it. I can then bring up the visualization of that resource group. So this is effectively you know, a one-to-one -to, -one to what your resources actually are in your live Azure subscription, so to speak. Nice. So this is so like yeah, even if I didn't ever like even if I didn't ever author my infrastructure yeah. or my cloud resources as I'm now calling it. I like your comment on infrastructure. It's all, all sorts of resources in the cloud these days. If we're if we didn't even author those with infrastructure as code or an ARM template, or even if I authored them with uh, with Terraform maybe and deployed them potentially, right. right? I could still come in here and look at what's running in my account today and click the button and get this awesome view. Yeah, that's right. So if any of you, I mean, these resources, I probably, I may, may well have built manually, but the visualizer will shall still show them if they're in the Azure portal. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of things we can do. Um, you know, perhaps relay it out so we can make, um, we can snap this. So it's a bit more like Visio. As you mentioned, it's like Visio for Azure. So we could turn on snapping feature. So as we drag these around, um, they'll all snap to a grid. Um, there's various other options, like we can refit the view. So I click that, it'll re relay everything out. Um, there are options to be able to change the layout or make it a, a guess at trying to try a lay it out for you uh, as logically as possible. And if I had lots of uh, a very, very busy template or a busy resource group with lots of resources in there, I might want to filter certain elements out. So, for example, these uh, security rules, you know, I could have hundreds in my resource group. Um, yeah. I can simply type the resource uh, type or substring of that and it will take it out of the view so I can kind of declutter it. And then when I've got something I'm happy with and I want to perhaps you know reuse, perhaps share it with people who don't have access to Azure, I can export this out as, a, as an image file, use it in my documentation, use it in a presentation, um, share it with, with, with other people. Oh, nice. All those times I've had to whip together these uh, diagrams of stuff that I've put together in Azure for a presentation or something. Now I can just go to the release candidate portal and do this. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is this is brilliant. Ben, thank you so much for sharing this with us. We've got um, so we've got two different versions here. We've got the just to be to make it clear to the audience, we've got the Visual Studio Code version, uh, which is the open source, the 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 original, I guess, that you created. Yep. And then yeah. um, we have this portal version. And uh, maybe just explain just the kind of nuance or the difference between the two, or maybe where you may use one over the other. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we hit on it in the in the demo. Like, if you're offering the templates. Uh, and you're actually you're building your own templates. You'd probably want to use the Visual Studio Code version because you've got the actual, you know, the files on your machine or in, in a in a in a project that you're working on. Um, if you're not, you know, using uh, ARM templates at all, you can use the portal version no, no matter what. You know, just to get a simple understanding of what I've got inside a resource group. So, you know, if you're you're comfortable with VS Code and writing ARM templates, then yeah, absolutely use the extension version. Uh, everyone That's else cool. can use the portal version. Lovely. So, Ben, unfortunately, we can't talk about this all day. Uh, we need to get this get the show going, unfortunately. So okay. uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing this with us. If people are interested in checking this out, where can they go and find both versions of these? I know you shared some links, but maybe if you could just reshare uh, where they can go and find these so they know where to go next. Yeah, so the, the portal version is in the rc.portal.azure.com. The the, the, the the open source version, the, the VS Code version, uh, is available in the VS Code Marketplace. You can simply search for it from within VS Code or the Marketplace. And from there, you can get a link to the GitHub repo as well. So it's all open source. You can go and have a look at, look at, my, uh, look at my code. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Now, uh, next up, we'll be talking to 
some more guests on the Build Digital 2020 show, but now for a quick break. Hi, 